Hello, homebodies. It's Angelica here. I got on my Howard sweatshirt. See that? Howard University. So, um, <laughs> it's really HU, you know, but I'm not going to go there right now because I just got off from work. So, I am just. <laughs> but I wanted to come on here. And today is Teachable Tuesday. So, I want to share. Um, very quickly, this is not going to be long at all. Other ways, no matter where I move, this light. <laughs> Take away. Um, it really is cool in the background. I really, when I like look back and edit, like it looks cool, but like at the same time, it maybe can be a bit irritating. So, um. So I try to be mindful of that. But every now and then it's like, oh, that's a nice light. But not to deviate from the point, today is Teachable Tuesday and I teach simple ways that you can like get in the mindset of preparing to do your creative work. And I'm just going to show a few pictures of some places that you can... Um, have sort of that thinking chair, thinking mindset in a sense. So when it comes to creativity and writing out your story or writing a song or creating any kind of body of work, you need to have a comfortable place to do that. Right now I'm sitting on a couch upstairs um, <laughs> and I like sitting up here because it's, it's quieter and I've just been kind of hanging up, hanging out up here for a little bit, but it's, it's comfortable and it's a place where I can be creative and think I, you know, you can do, you know, you try not to bring work to bed with you, but, um, you can sit in your bed, you know, get one of those comfortable, chair like things or those pillows with the arms where you can sit and relax and get one of those um those portable desks that you can kind of put in the bed with you or put on your comfortable chair and type your blog movie story play book um music poetry any of those things so I, I took a few pictures of just some random places in the house to just kind of like show an example of, you know, comfortable spots, more um, set up spots that you can do work in. Sometimes you can even use, you know, just a nice desk or office space and do your work that way. So... To, when it comes to creativity, you always have to be mindful of what you're surrounded by and the kind of the kind of atmosphere you're kind of in. Is it quiet? It, does it have some distractions? Do I have good lighting for what I'm trying to work on? You know, what's the weather like outside that just kind of may shift some things? Um, but you know, some people might find it peaceful to kind of maybe hear rain in the background or have some light in the space that they're sitting in to come up with their creativity. So, you know, just be very mindful of your space. Be very mindful of the kind of focus that you need in order to be creative. So that's my Teachable Tuesday for today. Like I said, very short, sweet, to the point. And yeah. Whether it's a chair, whether it's on the floor, whether it's on a pillow, whether it's on a bing bag, whether it's outside, whether it's inside, quiet space, maybe you like a noisy space, maybe you like to be in a cafe that's a little bit more busy, you hear like the cups moving and stuff like that, and maybe you like a more quieter desk office space. It really just depends on you and how you want to be creative. I'm also going to share um, James too next and because I like I said it can be something that you could it can maybe help you throughout the week but that is coming up next so that's Teachable Tuesday have a good evening this is James 2 favoritism forbidden 
My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing gold, a gold ring, and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy tri triumphs over judgment. Faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good! Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? What was, was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. That is James 2. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Find spaces that encourage you. Find words that uplift you and continue to create, continue to believe in yourself. And we will get through it. Good night. Mm -hmm.